So, we are discussing about the steepest descent algorithm where we have seen that solving a problem a x is equal to b is equivalent to find out minima of the functional j x where j x is defined as x transpose a x minus x transpose b. And in order to propose an iterative method for solving or uh, for finding the minima of j x we uh, discussed about the gradient search algorithm that choose any value x 0 find j x uh, 0 there and then find out the gradient of j and move along minus gradient of j and move up to a certain distance where this along which j reduces on that particular line and this distance is measured by a parameter alpha we have discussed about how to find out alpha till which j reduces along that line and then when you see that j has reached a local minima along that particular line change the direction and go to the another take another direction. So, uh, roughly it is this particular method that start with one particular x 0 move along one direction and then see that this is a local minima of j from here you take another direction and that is how you approach the global minima. And this is the parameter alpha that uh, distance should be covered in particular uh, one particular search direction. So, that the uh, search is optimum and in, in least number of steps we re reach the local minima. Now, we thought about um, taking this into a solver and writing an uh, proposing an algorithm for iteratively solving x is equal to b or finding min j minima using this uh, which is called the steepest descent algorithm let uh, k be the kth iteration value and the error is defined as d k is x x k minus x uh, x star where x star is the solution of x star is equal to b x star is the so where uh, we have the solution x star is equal to b that is the location where j is minima. So, this let x star be the point where j is minimal and d k is the error that means, uh, we considered a guess value x k or a k th iteration value x k d k is the error which is x k minus x star. The residual is defined as b minus a x k. If x k is equal to x star we reach the right value b minus a x is equal to 0. So, residual is 0 till it is not reached this is a non 0 value and we do define residual as b minus a x k or this is equal to b into a into d k. Why? Because b minus a x k is equal to b minus a x k minus b minus a x star because this is 0. So, this is uh, residual is d k is equal to sorry. So, just a second there is a there is a small sign convention small sign convention issue r k is b minus a x k and uh, this is. So, ok. So, let us define this is equal to x star minus x k this is minus d k then it should come out. So, this is minus of a into x k minus x star which is a into d k. So, let us define minus d k is x k minus x star. So, now new iteration guess will be updated as x k plus 1 is equal to x k plus alpha k into minus gradient of j x is equal to x k. So, it started with a value of x k and we will update it to the uh, better uh, new iteration x k plus 1 and this is this is how because we are also when we are th thinking of solving x is equal to b we are also trying to find out the minima of j. So, you should go along minus red j x k and we have found out there is a parameter alpha k uh, by which we should go in that direction. So, I have j x is equal to half of x transpose a x minus b 
grad j is equal to a x minus b as a is a symmetric matrix x k plus 1 is equal to alpha k into minus grad j of x is equal to x k which is evaluated at x k we have seen that earlier and minus grad j is b my grad j is a x minus b. So, minus grad j is grad j is a x minus b therefore, minus grad j is b minus a x. So, x k plus 1 into alpha k into b minus a x k and we have defined b minus a x k as r k. So, this is x k plus 1 is equal to x k into x k uh, x k plus 1 is equal to x k plus alpha k r k. r k is the same vector as the vector direction as the same vector in the direction a v r k and v are same right because we have written earlier v is equal to minus grad j now we can see that v is the same as r k. So, mm, I have seen that alpha is equal to v if v is minus grad j now we have seen that minus grad j is r k. So, r k and v are same uh, alpha is equal to v transpose uh, uh, b minus a x k v transpose a v. So, we will get alpha is equal to r k transpose r k and v are same b minus a x k by r k transpose a r k which is r k transpose r k into r k transpose a r k. And there is uh, one observation which is r k and r k plus 1 are orthogonal why uh, because grad j is the direction in which j reduces first test grad j is perpendicular to the j contour where it was evaluated. Now, we move till j is minima or grad j this is tangential to j contour uh, to tangential to j contour at x k plus 1 this is x k plus 1. The new direction is minus gradient of j x at x k plus 1 is perpendicular to the to the tangent. So, this grad j x k and grad j x k plus 1 must be perpendicular to each other. Therefore, r k and r k plus 1 are orthogonal vectors. So, nevertheless we have found out that for one particular iteration how to find out alpha k. So, the steepest descent method will be start with one guess value x 0 and then do an iteration k is equal to 0, 1, 2 until it converges. Uh, compute r z r k is equal to b minus a x k compute alpha k which is r k transpose r k by r k transpose a r k update x k plus 1 is equal to x k plus alpha k r k and check if r, r k is less than an epsilon is a small value if, r, if the residual b minus a I have to see whether b minus a x is equal to 0 if b minus a x is a very small value then uh, sorry if if not if not a very small value if it is a very small value then it is iterated if it is not a very small value then set k is equal to k plus 1 and go to the 2 and do the uh, try, try for the convergence of the iterations. If else if this value is very small r k is a very small number then you say that iterations are converged and you have reached the right solution. So, this is roughly the uh, steepest descent algorithm what we dis discussed here and for a symmetric positive definite matrix we can utilize this be uh, irrespective of the way it has been represented as a diagonal dominant matrix or not only only we have to see that uh, this this matrix uh, is symmetric as well as positive definite and we can utilize this method. And this is in general a faster method for symmetric positive definite matrix this is a faster method than Gauss-Siddle or Gauss-Siddle SOR or Jacobi method. However, when we look into this method we see that 
if we try to think uh, do a computer program here, there are two matrix vector multiplication here a into x and a into r. So, if I have a million by mid 10 to the power 6 by 10 to the power 6 matrix, each of these steps needs multiplication with each element of the matrix with the vector each component of the vector. So, in a sense uh, 10 to the power 6 into 10 to the power 6 multiplications are needed, each row needs 10 to the power 6 multiplications and there are 10 to the power 6 rows. So, um, this particular method needs in Gossel in each, each iteration we only have to do one A x multiplication because x i is equal to b minus sum of a i i j x uh, j at the older value except the diagonal term. So, there is only one matrix vector multiplication, there are two matrix vector multiplications. If I try to do a computer program, write a computer program out of it, though the number of steps will be less than Gossel, however, the calculations will be way high for large matrices because they are doing in each each iteration the calculations will be way high for the large matrices because they are doing lot of cal uh, the Gossel is only doing only once matrix vector multiplication whereas, the uh, steepest descent will do it twice. So, you need to modify this algorithm. So, you have seen that there are two matrix vector multiplications and two vector vector product vector vector is R k transpose R k. Uh, and R k transpose A R k which is another uh, again another vector is the vector vector product. However, they are less con time consuming because if there are 10 to the power 6 rows there then only 10 to the power 6 operations are there. However, matrix vector is 10 to the power 6 into 10 to the power 6 10 to the power 12 operations are there is, is a very compute, uh, computationally costly operation if there is a matrix vector multiplication it is done twice. So, we have to see how can we reduce the cost of the computation or number of operations or can we improve the algorithm little bit better so that we can at least avoid one matrix vector multiplication here. So, that for million by million matrix 10 to the power 12 floating point operations are saved if I can do one matrix vector multiplications here. So, need to look into some modifications Pos some possible modifications into the steepest descent method before we propose an algorithm for computer programs. So, the idea is uh, again if I go back to the previous slide that uh, every why I need two matrix vector multiplication one is needed to find alpha another is needed to find r and every time we need to do, do one matrix multiple vector multiplication to find the updated value of r, r k is equal to b minus a x k. Once we update x we need to do a matrix vector multiplication here. So, that is actually replaced here updating r k plus 1 is equal to r k plus 1 is equal to b minus a x k plus 1 which is b minus a x k b alpha k r k is b minus a x k alpha k a r k that is r k minus alpha k a r k. And if I again I go back to the previous slide a r k is needed also for computing of alpha k plus 1. So, if r k plus 1 can be computed using a r k then this is the only matrix vector multiplication which is common both to calculation of r k plus 1 as well as to the computation of alpha k. And in that light we will try to modify it, we will see that this is also needed for computing alpha k. So, while computing alpha k will store a r k and you will utilize this for updating r k plus 1. The final steepest descent algor method algorithm will be start with a guess value of x is equal to x 0, compute b minus a x and r is equal to b minus a x and 
define a new variable p which is ar, p will be utilized later and until convergence that means convergence means that until r is less than epsilon, epsilon is a very small number. Do compute alpha which is r transpose r into r transpose p. So, alpha is equal to r transpose r, r transpose a r and now a r has been substituted by p. Update x is equal to this is because the same variable x which is overwritten as x is equal to x plus alpha r. that is why we written uh, x arrow is equal to x plus alpha r. This is the way to write something which is getting overwritten. Update x is equal to x as x plus alpha r. Update r, so r k plus 1 is equal to r k minus alpha k a r. evaluated at k -th level. So, this is r k minus alpha k p k p k. So, update r is equal to r minus alpha p compute p is equal to a r and then if the convergence is not done end do means you again come back here and further with this the new value of p compute alpha update x update r and uh, repeat this loop until you see that r is less than mod r is less than epsilon or convergence has been achieved. So, this is the steepest descent method algorithm and this is applicable only for a symmetric What happens if A is not symmetric positive definite? Then the problem we are solving in this problem what we are solving here is not finding x is equal to b, is solving where j is minima. The problem we are solving is not j is minima is not now solving x is equal to b, is something different is if it is not symmetric we are solving half of A plus A transpose x is equal to b, a different problem. So, we are trying to find out minimum of something which is not x is solving x is equal to b. However, where convergence is based on mod r uh, is less than epsilon. So, either it will not converge, but if it converges then it will take us to the same solution that mod r is less than epsilon. So, x is equal to b. So, in case the matrix is not symmetric or matrix is little uh, not the asymmetricity is not very high a uh, i k is probably a k i plus a small number. In that case it still converges, but it takes lot of lot many iteration does not take less number of iterations because we are not using the right solution algorithm for that cases. However, if only if the matrix is symmetric positive definite then using this method is advantageous in terms that this the formulation is complicated one program is, is also probably little complicated than the gauss seidel method. However, this is advantageous because it saves times. The number of steps are small, number of iterations are small, com calculations in each iteration is comparable to gauss seidel So, overall computational cost is less if we apply this method. Only the matrix, if the matrix is symmetric positive definite, then application of this method is worthwhile. Otherwise, it might give us the right result because we are looking for this criteria that mod r less than epsilon that means, b minus a x is less than epsilon. We are looking into this criteria. So, it might give if it converges it will give us right uh, it, it shows that it will take us a x is equal to b location, uh, but it can take a very no high number of iterations in the matrix is not symmetric positive definite. So, this if I have a symmetric positive definite matrix this is the algorithm through which we will we'll see later uh, like gauss seidel how or SOR how a computer program can be developed and we can also demonstrate that the number of iterations and as well as computational time is much small than gauss seidel or Jacobi or SOR method for a symmetric positive definite matrix. So, we will we'll see in later class that how we can develop a computer program using this. 
And interestingly, this is only one matrix vector multiplication. Earlier we had two matrix vector multiplication, so one one has been reduced. There is only one matrix vector multiplication here. Now we need to look into the convergence of this method. That is for 2D, I can uh, give you some visualization that iteratively we, if we change the search direction, we should approach to the J minima or this method should converge. Now, there, there are certain theorems and analysis which can show that the error convergence means the error will be smaller x minus x star is smaller than uh, uh, where, uh, is the error x k minus x star. This error will finally reduce to a very small number given certain conditions that let a be the theorem for convergence tells that let a be an SPD matrix that is a symmetric positive definite matrix. Then the A norm of the error vector which is x k minus x star, x star is the exact solution of x is equal to b. Generated by steepest descent algorithm satisfy the relation mod d k plus 1 A norm, A norm of any vector is defined as E transpose A E. So, A uh, d k plus 1 transpose d k plus uh, this is basically d uh, I am sorry uh, there is an issue d k plus 1 transpose a a norm of d k plus 1 or let us take d k it is a norm is basically given as d k transpose a d k this norm is satisfy the relation is less than equal to lambda max minus lambda mean divided by lambda max plus lambda mean of d k a. So, if we have any initial always d k plus 1 is less than d k a. The error x k minus x star at any iteration is always less than the error in the previous iteration. Therefore, it should converge to a finally, this error should should be a small value and it should converge to a small uh, small number should converge to the right solution. However, the rate of convergence here depends on not on the spectral radius rather the maximum and minimum lambda. So, the relation the difference of the maximum eigenvalue and minimum eigenvalue of this lambda max and lambda mean are there is no iteration matrix are the eigenvalues of the matrix A only. So, it depends on the eigenvalues of the matrix A. So, this algorithm and this shows that this algorithm will converge for any ga any guess value x 0, because this is always a number less than 1 therefore, d k plus 1 is always error is always reducing. So, finally, the error should go down it will st start with some value it will keep on the magnitude modulus of error is always reduce reducing. So, it will uh, it will be a small number and this is this is a positive number right, because a is SPD, this is always greater than 0 as A is SPD. So, this number will be greater than 0 and reducing that means that if this is d k A and this is k, this will asymptotically approach 0, it, it will never be exactly 0, it will be always greater than 0, but it will be a very small number and then it will be finally 0. So, this algorithm will converge for any initial guess x 0. Ah, this is some mistake here, this should be d k. I should correct it in the uh, original notes also, this is d k. So, you can see d k plus 1 a norm is lambda max minus lambda mean of uh, by lambda max plus lambda mean of d k which is lambda max by lambda mean minus 1 by lambda max plus lambda mean plus 1 of d k. And spectral condition number we have defined it earlier of any matrix is the ratio of lambda max and lambda mean. We have said that as uh, small as the condition number therefore, lambda max and lambda mean are closer it is easier good for matrix solver. So, you are also seeing here and this is always greater than 
So, basically this is absolute all these are absolute values. So, this is always greater than 1 all this should be an absolute value. So, this is always greater than equal to 1. So, as this value is close to 1 this number is smaller is 1.0008 this is a very small number. So, in very few steps the uh, decay plus 1 uh, the error should approach 0. So, if convergence spectral radius is the convergence rate depends on the spectral condition number spectral condition number low spectral condition number that means faster convergence. And when discussing about condition number we have discussed that that if the condition number is small then the convergence is faster if lambda max and lambda mean are closer the con condition number are small convergence is faster and we can see if this number is smaller we will reach the convergence faster. So, low spect condition number will give a faster convergence here. So, this is the uh, first time we discussed earlier discussed about condition number we are seeing one example of condition number in uh, uh, first uh, in the rate of convergence of the one pa matrix particular matrix solver which is the steepest descent method matrix solver. Okay. So, this method will converge that means we started with some geometric functional and we can see that once we have derived the algorithm this algorithm converge starting with any guess value x 0 this algorithm should take us to the converge solution of A x is equal to b and that is only for symmetric positive definite matrix. Now, the question is that the entire exercise is only devoted for symmetric positive definite matrix. A matrix may not be symmetric in uh, reality we deal with number of cases where we get asymmetric matrices. For example, if we think of a finite difference uh, equation that we are discussing earlier uh, and if we use non-uniform grid spacing the matrix will be asymmetric. So, how can we modify this equation for an asymmetric matrix as well as in a general case there can be a, a, a negative definite matrix for, uh, for positive, uh, positive definite matrix there is a solution if the matrix is not positive definite if there is a negative eigenvalue what is how to solve this matrix this method does not cover those ma matrices. Therefore, it is still now restri restricted only to a closed class of method a small class of method which is symmetric positive definite. Now, next goal will be if we can extend this method for general matrices which are not symmetric and non positive definite matrix. And what we will discuss for that is called a general projection methods instead of having a method for gra searching gradient uh, through gradient search appro approaching the minimum value of a functional we will see a more generalized method where probably the functional is, is little different we are trying to find out minima of some other function, but solving a matrix which is not symmetric or which may not be positive definite also. Extension of this method will take us to general projection methods which can solve a larger class of matrices we will so see that in the next classes. Thank you.